I could make this video hours longer if I just focused on the relationships that Trollstopia built up. Poppy, Val, and Holly created such a strong bond, and Val's journey opening up especially was so sweet to watch, and it was so well paced. But aside from just the ambassador's super cute unlikely friendships, we also have some really fun side quests. Season 7 episode 4, DJ Suki, Demo, and Synth are in a giant game of hide and seek that ends with a group hug. Six hours later and these three are the only ones still seeking. General description of these characters, DJ Suki only has three modes, party mode, sleep, and being a great aunt. And Demo, his name is Demo, I don't know why I always manage to fuck up people's names, is the rock troll with the most sensitive soul. Demo, Demo is a classical music enjoyer and proud manager of Val's band. Synth wants to be everyone's biggest cheerleader, is an amazing friend, and might be dating Branch. Don't worry, Poppy knows and is chill with it. I've decided that Trollstopia is the polyamorous universe. Where was I? So these three are the chillest people, but their attention span is very short. And honestly, in their defense, this hiding spot seems impossible. Also, this far into the game, just come out and group hug them anyway. How long are they able to commit to this? The trio had to stop playing the game anyway because they had to deal with the raccoon invasion all on their own. Raccoons trash wherever they are and have no respect for anyone. Just really mean dudes. So wow, perfect three for the job. They had such little confidence in themselves that they thought, hmm, what would Poppy do in this situation? Oh, she would sing a song about friendship to these feral creatures. Halfway through the song, they realized it wasn't working, but kept singing their panic anyway until the raccoons attacked them. Their second approach was to be like Val. She wouldn't show weakness. She would show them who's boss. And at first it was working until Demo Demo. tries to kick a rock over, but accidentally stubs his toe. And he falls over in pain as DJ Suki and Synth try to comfort him. (laughs) And the raccoons attacked because they showed weakness. Uh, I think we might have just shown weakness. Would you believe me if I told you these three sweet angels ended the episode by pushing these raccoons on a raft, presumably to their death, because I don't know if these creatures can swim, and they say their goodbyes and job well done, as the other trolls are still waiting for them. Troll culture seems exhausting, how did none of them go home? There's a whole episode where Holly puts on a musical, and it just made me wish that there was a show tunes genre of troll, but there isn't. They never address it. Wasted opportunity. In one of my favorite Trolls the Beat Goes On episode, Pillow Wars, the trolls are celebrating the pillow harvest. Each year, the trolls pick a pillow that will last them the entire year. The pillows talk to the trolls, choosing them. And this pillow, by the name of Lord Bedfellow, chose Branch and Poppy, which means they have to get married now. That's actually not what this means. It's actually just the catalyst for episode shenanigans of them fighting over this pillow. But my headcanon is that the pillow sensed the love and called to both of them, because usually pillows don't do that, but he was trying to get them together. And if it was movie Poppy and Branch, it would have worked. This episode also had a West Side Story inspired dual number, but again, that just makes me wish one of the six strings was dedicated to show tunes. Also, for the longest time, I tried to keep track of Trolls Holidays, but just like with the Critters, it was impossible. From the Beat Goes On episode Blank Day, we know their holidays or events planned every single day, except for this random Friday. Sky Toronto explains why this is. It was due to a very specific set of circumstances, one of which being... Oh god, this is painful to say. I have to amp myself up to say this. One of the reasons is that, uh, On Fleekwinox was a week late. The, the, the what? Dude, way to age the shit out of your fairly new show. Why did you write that? One of my favorite episodes of Trollstopia was The Search for Peace. Peace being spelled P-I-E-C-E. Which was a surprisingly touching look at Branch's grief. He opened up to his friends about how much puzzles mean to him because him and his grandma would always complete puzzles together. And she would tell him that the best part of puzzles is that everything fits into place like how it's supposed to. So when a piece is missing when he's with his friends, he spirals. They spend hours looking for this piece. He lashes out at them when they want to go home. But in the end, he looks back at the puzzle box and finds a note from his grandma. It explains that she had taken a piece out because even when a piece is gone, it's gonna be okay. I'm what you call in the industry a big fucking baby. So that shit destroyed me. Believe it or not, 
I feel like I still have more to talk about. So maybe I'll just get rambly on the second channel and talk more about Trollstopia in the future? I don't know. I have a lot more media to watch for the main channel, but stay tuned over here. I know that on the second channel, I'm gonna show you my vision board. I'm gonna bring back Feralton. I'm gonna do a Q&A. I don't know, we're gonna have fun on here. I just wanted to let you know all the things that are coming up. I didn't film an official outro for the second channel video because I didn't know I was even going to make a second channel video until I was editing that beast of a trolls slash trolls uh, lore. And if you haven't watched that yet, definitely be sure to check it out. All right, see you next time. Bye.